Hey everyone, Ekman here with a, another video, and today we have a meta report for the first week of the OPO6 meta in the English version of the card game. We had five big events this past weekend, and uh, we just also have a lot of other data that we're going to go through, so I want to just kind of go and make a video going over and encompassing all of it, so uh, that's what we have for this one. Uh, I also have like some deck lists we're going to go over and uh, an updated tier list real quick too, uh, so this should be just a good time. If you guys are new though, make sure to hit that like and subscribe button. It really does uh, help the channel a lot. And if you guys want any of the deck lists from any of the individual events, they're all on my website, Eggman Events, which are linked below. So let's jump on into it. And first we do have uh, TCG Matchmaking, which is a ranked server for uh, for the One Piece card game. You guys can check that out in the, uh, the link below too. Uh, I've been playing a lot of it on my live stream as well. It's kind of where I've been playing most of my games. And they've been collecting data for the last month so this is for the month uh, month of march uh for these decks and their their rankings for it real quick so we can check this out real quick but if you guys want more details uh for them you can check them out in again the description for the discord they also have a patreon where they're releasing more of these stats as well every uh, every week so uh, you guys can check that out this is just the picture that they said that i can show to you guys but they have more detailed stats uh i think for more leaders as well uh going into uh if you check out their discord too but for for this one you can kind of see some of the more popular leaders for this one there are uh one or two that i wish was on here too like star deck 10 law i think that one's been pretty popular uh and no no real red decks either no zoro white beard uh so those ones are I guess just kind of uh guessing I, I know that they're not as popular but they have been getting some wins this past week too but looking through it uh i think what we've been calling the big three for for this card game has still been uh katakuri here we have uh also sakazuki and moria right and all these pretty much have positive win rates more or less uh the only one that moria loses to is perona which i've noticed this quite a bit this is a, a pretty tough matchup for moria just because we can answer their four drops really easily and then 10 drop dofi if we run it stuns the leader which is fantastic and we also get to play eight drop moria ourselves uh we just get it a little bit less consistently but it's there as well uh sahuzuki's in a good spot it does like have some like minor like losses and i also will say like these are like ranked games as well but these are not saying that these are like super duper best players which means that there are like some players who are just really good at this card game and they can kind of defy the stats right or they can they can defy them a little bit uh so some of these kind of higher skill cap leaders you have to take with a little bit of grain of salt just because uh if someone's new is playing it on someone who's not as good as as what the deck requires it can kind of like lower their win rates at times so uh but i do think like sakazuki is in a good spot too only uh like rough matches are, are yellow more is it looks i'm gonna say it's closer to 50 50 really and uh but yeah yeah Yamato and uh, Sakazuki are the or Katakuri, sorry, the two rough ones. And then we also have Charlotte Katakuri, which seems to be pretty clean across across the board, having the best matchups. Uh, I ended up playing a lot of Katakuri this week already. And uh, man, sometimes that deck just plays itself. It's You just play it and you're just watching it happen and you just win. So I get, I get why that is the case. Maybe some people are frustrated about that too, but it's a very strong deck right now, and that's that's why like these uh, these win rates are pretty high. I mean, they're just like mildly uh, like I'd say like these are pretty close to fifty across the board. You just have like the best matchups in the game. Nothing like super great outside of like uh, Anel or Perona, which aren't like the meta right now. But I think that is important. Other than that, we do have like uh, Reju, which is pretty standard across the board too. Only bad matchup is Purple Luffy, which I don't think you're going to find that often. And uh, a lower uh, like a lower one for Katakuri. Curry, but I think a lot of people uh, who have been playing Raju are kind of justified for that. Uh, Yamato is like in the worst spot. It just has like some really lopsided ones, especially in now. I've played this matchup myself. It feels really bad. It's a really tough matchup for Yamato. And then Anel itself, uh, it has like some okay matchups into uh, some of the decks, but like, yeah, Sakazuki uh, is rough for it. And then also Gekomori is kind of rough for it. And then Katakuri is just super bad. So uh, I do think that is something that's impacting Anel from being good in this matter right now. Uh, and then Uta, Uta getting a top seems really impressive with all these like just negative matchups for it too. So uh, that's just kind of like my, my over gloss for it. If you guys want to check this out, you can just pause the video here. But um, I think it's it's really useful to have this information. We rarely, rarely do. So I really do appreciate TCG Matchmaking for, for having that and for letting me use their rank server. It's been a lot of fun uh, for that too. So anyways, that is the details there uh, for, for this one. They should be, again, making this pie chart every, or not pie chart, but this data every week on their Patreon. You guys can check it out there.
Anyways, all right, going into the actual events for OP06, we do have uh, five big events. Uh, one was a 386 cap, two were 512 caps, and two were 1024 caps. So because of that, uh, when I'm looking at top decks for the 386 and 512, it's a top 16 cut. And then for the 1024 caps, they are a top 32 cut for that. Uh, and of the winners, we have two Katakuris, one Sakazuki, one Moria, and one Newgate. And I will say, like, Katakuri, I, like, I don't, there, it's probably pretty close to being true, but in the first weekend, it's won more regionals than I feel like it's won almost all of 2023. Uh, it, it did get some tops, but I always felt like Katakuri was a little bit overrated uh, for those meta. It was still very strong, but, like, it would have... Uh, it usually has bad conversion rates, which it still does have some for, for these events, but it would be like, oh, 30% of or people are playing it, but only two get in the top 16, right? Like, that's not that's not great numbers for it. So, um, yeah, already a really strong start for Katakuri in this meta. And, uh, I again, I did do a lot of testing with it. I do think it's it's actually in a really good spot. We've been saying it for the last couple sets since OP03, uh, but I, I think strictly in OP06, it's a very, very strong meta contender. So it's it's finally finally made it, it made it to that top three in, in all that time so uh but yeah then also sakazuki moria not too surprising and again katakuri sakazuki and moria are the the three that i would say are the the big ones in the meta as it is and then we did have one new gate from the the oceana regionals it was technically the the first regionals in the format since it's, it was on australia and they're ahead in the time from us but uh really interesting well, we can look at the australian one too uh but they they had a lot of uh they had more diversity in their their top cut than uh, the rest of the events i think in that one so that's that's what's winning and that's how that is and then also uh if we're going looking at topping leaders for these first five events we did have 32 copies of gecko moria 28 copies of sakazuki 22 katakuri 10 yamato 9 reiju 3 anel 3 star deck 10 law and then singletons of newgate perona star deck uta nami and zoro so uh, honestly, again, like this big three taking just a little bit under 75% is what I'm expecting. I'm thinking about usually between like around two thirds of the meta. So that's kind of what this is looking like right now. Uh, Yamato and Reiju doing a good spot uh, in this meta too, getting uh, 19 spots in these these topping ones. And then uh, Anel and Law kind of just getting a couple ones. So it kind of looks like what it's reflecting in like the matchup chart that we saw earlier for the TCG matchmaking. Uh, and then, yeah, just some singletons. Uh, Perona's definitely the one that's, I think, like under underperforming compared to a lot of people think. I did play a lot of Perona in testing too, and I really like the deck when it goes off, but they're, uh, it's, it's very, very tempo based. And if you, you have a hard time setting up your trash with Perona compared to other decks, uh, which makes it a little bit trickier for you to actually get like an eight drop Moria off where like, uh, Gecko Moria and Sakazuki, you can just pitch the card off leader effect to make sure that you have it. Perona needs like a little bit extra oomph to get there, which is kind of rough. Uh, or you have to play like brand new and then hope you see the cards correctly or like a Sabo. And again, like it's draw two trash two, but it's, it's, uh, it's just, you need to find the cards, right? Uh, Uta, Uta is just, I think gets better with EBO one. I think that in, in this meta, it's a little bit rough. Also like, uh, Anel and Law, I think those three specifically, they get better with the release of EBO one, but without it, they're just in a kind of a rough spot. And then, uh, Newgate and Zoro, I think that they, we'll have to see if this is true or not, but in a meta, uh, usually uh, you can get away with playing aggressive stuff early because people are still adjusting to what uh, what like the optimal plays are for their decks. And then once they do, they, they can usually get rid of aggro decks, kind of, unless it's like an aggro deck format. So uh, I don't know if I expect to see Nugate and Zoro continue to top uh, after this week, but we'll have to see. And then Nami, we have a Nami. We did have like a new card for it too, but uh, it did help and it did win. I uh, get a top 16 with it, so... Uh, we'll probably see like a occasional Nami pop up, but uh, I don't think it's going to be like a meta threat either. So anyways, these are all the kind of the stats for the tournaments that I want to go over real quick. And let's go over the winning decks for each tournament. All right, and we have our winning deck list right now. We're going to start off with our Katakuris. So we have both Andrew's and Michael's builds. Uh, I played a little bit more of Andrew's personally, and I did a, a big live stream with it. I went like 13-2 and two with it, which is pretty good. The only thing we, I lost to was uh, Red Purple Law, and I did lose a mirror match with it. But uh, this deck is really strong. I think that it has a really good build for it. Specifically, like the amount of 2Ks that we're running really helps us on the defense side since we're running, uh, I think we're running like 12 or 14. Let's see, 2, 8, 10, 
Uh, yeah, we're playing 14 of them, which is quite a bit, uh, but that helps just a lot with what we're doing. Uh, we're also playing Onami, which I don't think we're playing in the build from, from Michael, but I do really like this card, being able to, like, if we're at 3 Dawn and we don't really have anything, uh, we, if we don't have Paro Sparrow, playing Onami and then, like, putting a Dawn underneath our Kanakuri, we have a 7k Banish, uh, which is great, and it's hard for them to get out of, uh, and in some matchups, and then it also means we can use our leader effect to kind of manipulate our own life from there, too, so I do like that for for the deck uh other than that we do have like uh our, our four drops and stuff um and then our, our top end seven drop lin lin as i was saying earlier uh this week too is just it's really good in this meta i think like previous metas it was just okay but with so many decks at four life right now uh it's it just hits a lot harder and then also in con uh with reject being around for the next couple of weeks uh it's great if your opponent goes down to one then you're in range for reject just winning you the game sometimes so uh, i think seven drop on curve is just great for you uh because also like the cards you get into your life are better right now for katakuri so even if they give you the heal they could give you kiko nojo they could give you like a, an onami they can give you just a bunch of stuff that that helps you out too so honestly i think the the deck is very clean there are some like minor changes I would make from it, but this this is definitely a really good build. So this is Andrew's build, and then going to Michael, uh, just some kind of minor differences. They are playing the Charlotte Brule, which um, I don't uh, I don't like this card right now as much. I think it gets uh, gets answered way too easily. Um, I know we're playing Sanji and ours, but I would don't mind playing Sanji for four at, at points. So uh, and which is they're also played in this one. Uh, and I, I feel like it is like sometimes like Brule can win you the game if your opponent's going for game and don't have have it, but uh, I'm just not as big of a fan, but I don't think it's a bad choice. We are also playing more of the events in this one, going for a 2-3-3 split in uh, the version from Andrew going a 1-2-2 split. Uh, this is probably like the biggest point of like contention or, or just what you want for personalization. Uh, I kind of like the 2-2-2 two, two, two split, honestly. Uh, I kind of want one more spot for you, the one who should disappear, since this card is really good. Uh, since we can put it to the bottom of our life pretty easy if it ends up there with Katakuri, uh, I think it's it's in a good spot for us. So um, I don't know. We'll, we'll see if that's the case there, but I do like the I do like having these. And like obviously, like all these can help you win the game. Like uh, reject, uh, if you're a two life, reject into 200 million volts, puts you down to one life and then rest the blocker and then you go for game. Very strong. You really, your opponent really can't do much outside of just having enough or not being down to, you know, one life. Uh, and then this build too, we do have three Lin Lins and then one copy of eight drop Katakuri. Uh, I think this is fine. Uh, I know some people it, it's needed for like, uh, getting rid of like Moria sometime for the tempo or sometimes that, uh, like eight drop kid. Uh, we don't really have an answer to that card outside of just having, uh, like enough pressure to clear board so i get why that's here um so if you want to run that you can um i don't know i like i just like the tempo version like we just go for it we play our good cards and uh, it really pays off so. and big congratulations to michael for winning the card of magical regional with this guy all right next up we have the moria so this is kyle Vo's build from it from the core tcg regional and uh, this was like obviously the first weekend of Gecko Moria, uh, and obviously the most popular deck into the top sixteen or top cuts, I guess, from uh, from the events that we had. Uh, not a, a whole lot of diversity from the Morias that I, I've seen that are topping, right? I know a lot of people are playing like Rebecca's. I know that was tempting, and uh, I have seen like some builds with Hina as well because there are some like good plays for it where you can do like Hina into like uh, putting something minus, and then you can use your Gecko Moria effect to play out a uh like the the absalom which is definitely like one of the strongest cards that this deck has uh hogback like we we know what this looks like right we play our, our three thriller bar cards of hogback perona and absalom because they're very good uh and then we use uh we try to recycle our, our gecko mori as much as possible uh and then uh i don't know like i don't know what what started it but we had like oh you know like maybe a couple great eruptions ice age into yeah we need four of each uh for both of these and i, I think like the biggest reason for that is that uh absalom is just so easy to to get the removal of something that like using a one dawn card uh with absalom to get rid of whatever your opponent played last turn is is just pretty good so uh especially since like it's it's you don't have to play like the absalom uh from your hand you get to recycle it a lot that's very good for you and uh yeah the deck the deck's very strong there's a lot of removal potential for it we're playing like four raw blue cheese in, in conjunction with the gecko so we can do there and then the sabo like sabo's i think in a really good spot um some decks just really don't have a way to answer it sakazuki does with bottom decking it uh as the removal 
from Houndblaze or, or some other sources. But uh, in other situations, like this is just like, oh, checkmate. So um, I think he's been, he's been very good. And putting cards into your trash that you need for Moria later, uh, especially since you don't really care about putting some of your Thriller Bark Pirates in there. It's in a good spot. So uh, I don't have much more to say about this. It's, it's pretty streamlined from uh, a lot of the other Gecko Moria lists that I've seen. But I think the deck is good. There is some skill playing it. And uh, just con big congratulations to Kyle for their finish there. Next up, we have our Sakazuki. So this is Giovanni's build here from the Germany regionals that happened. And uh, this is a pretty unique build. I, I did not go over this event specifically. All the deck lists are on my website, but I just didn't have time when I was you know, out of town this past weekend. Uh, but I had people say, you know, this is you should check out this list. It's pretty interesting. It's pretty unique. And you know what? I, I think I, I do agree with it. Uh, we don't have any copies of Great Eruption or Ice Age, which is uh, a big shocker to me. Uh, and I think the idea is that, you know what, we can use Hina uh, specifically and also the, the Marine Ford, which I really do like this stage. I think it's it's pretty great uh, in, what, in a st situation where we just have so many cards right now that just pop that the cost reduction is needed sometimes. Uh, luckily, you can't, or luckier, or, or I don't know how you say it, but Mor uh, Moria can't use this. If Moria could use this card, uh, I think it'd be in a, uh, you put in this deck, but it's only for Navy cards, but... Um, it just means like between Sakazuki and Marine Ford, uh, you get like two reduction for free every turn. Uh, and if it's the turn you play this Marine Ford, which you can play another copy on top of it, uh, you know, giving three reduction for, for free is, uh, is pretty great already. So I think that helps you for that one. Uh, and we just have like so much like low to the ground removal of Houndblaze and Ama. Uh, and a specific, specifically with these cards too, is that not only does it get around on KO effects, but there are just so many cards that exist that you are like decks that need cards specifically in their trash that Ama puts it to the bottom of the deck so they don't have access to that, right? So Gekka Moria wants their Thriller the Bark Pirates back. And then we also have cards like uh, Reiju, uh, who wants their pieces in their trash so you can recycle them. Putting them to the bottom of the deck just kind of ruins all those plans too. So I do like that. And it's a really interesting build. We're only playing two copies of Rob Lucci as well, comparatively, because we have so much other removal. Uh, it looks just really, really unique. So I'm gonna have to. Tr I'm gonna try this out on my stream today, at least today as, as uh, of what this video comes out. But uh, it seemed like an interesting build and uh, definitely unique compared to what I've seen otherwise. So this is Giovanni's list and congratulations for their top or just their first place finish there. And then to wrap it up, we do have Leo or Leon, sorry, with their uh, build of Newgate and. Uh, this this is just a very optimized OP05 deck, and I, I mean that in the nicest way. Uh, Newgate was kind of like the the sleeper for uh, for that meta for being able to beat Sakazuki every once in a while, just because we have so many cards with Rush and we get so much value um, that it's it's hard for the deck to kind of keep up with, uh, just specifically because of uh, all the tools for it. So uh, this deck was uh, a little bit worried to just be out of the meta specifically because of the four drop pudding card that exists. Uh, luckily, I don't think that card is uh, played outside of Reiju. So you don't you only have like one matchup that's like a quote unquote auto loss or potential. But uh, yeah, this deck is just, you know, all aggression. We just play all these one drops. We have like Nico Robin to get rid of uh, Rebecca's if they're playing it as well. And uh, we just get a lot of value from attacking every turn. So like the, that's the issue. Like in a meta right now where uh, it's very difficult to have your, your battle cards survive a turn if your opponent really wants to get rid of them. Uh, if you play a card with Rush, we already get the value from it, right? Like being able to play Luffy on five, be a 6K, and then a 6K with Newgate. Like, and then if your opponent wants to attack in anything, they have to, to do that. And we're also kind of in a spot where people want to play cards on Curve, which means if they have seven Dawn, they want to play their seven drop. And because of that, uh, it's difficult to find room to put Dawn on your leader or other cards to, you know, threaten a 6K. Uh, and it's, like, easier to get rid of, too. So I think the deck's in a in an interesting spot right now. We'll see if it continues the top in this format. And uh, and this is the build here. So this is Leon's build. And uh, that's kind of what we're going over for, for, this, uh, for the deck list. And let's go to the quick tier list update. All right, and real quick, here is my current version of the tier list. It's a little bit bearer, or I, I removed some leaders from it that I didn't think were meta, uh, but I did make one uh, like a week ago, and I did want to kind of update it. So uh, I think it's pretty clear on the top end, we've got this big three of Moria, Sakazuki, and Katakuri. I think that they're like the best decks in this format right now, and uh, they're going to take most of this format uh, as it is. Uh, for tier one, I have Yamato and Reiju. I used to have, I think, Yamato on, on the top tier and, uh, and Reiju in the mid. So I think both those decks are just going to be pretty good. I think they're kind of round out the top five of leaders in this format as it is. And uh, they're just in a good spot to, uh, 
uh, to when they have some rough matchups every once in a while. But if they just draw very good, they're in a good spot. Sometimes Yamato just wins. Like if you just like get two Nami's, uh, Onami's, and you just keep attacking, uh, your opponent's just going to run out of cards very quickly from it. So I think that's something that. Uh, that helps out this deck a lot as well. Uh, and then Reiju, uh, you are sometimes like needed to find your stage early, but uh, there are just some matchups that you just grind a lot of value and it's, you just have a hard time uh, losing if you see all your pieces. So I think those are there. Uh, tier 1.5, I think these are two decks that are just okay in this meta and uh, will probably be better. I'll probably actually move Uta up there too. Uh, where uh, they do get better, I think, in EBO one specifically because we got new cards for it, but uh, they're just kind of in an okay spot as it is right now. Uh, like obviously Anel, uh, I think just, they're just two better yellow decks to play. And I played a lot of Anel in OPO five, and uh, I I kind of I think I went from oh he's he's so good in OPO five, how could you be bad in OPO six? And uh, Katakuri is just better than him right now. It's it's pretty plain to see. So I do put him down there. But I do think with the EBO one cards, there are some chances for him to bounce back. Uh, and then Trafalgar Law and Uta just both in an okay spot as well. Um, Uta, we get some new film cards, and uh, in Trafalgar Law, we get some newer, more supernovas. So uh, and just four drops to play off off our leader effect. So we're just better with the the EBO one. And then tier two, these are just decks that uh, I think are. Maybe people are trying playing. I don't think they have the matchup spread for it. Uh, Uta's uh, Perona's probably like the top end of tier two, maybe not the bottom, but um, that's kind of just where it is. And this is based off like turn results and my experiences on ladder and, uh, and the TCG matchmaking uh, kind of pie or chart as well. So, anyways, this is the the list that I have right now for it. Uh, let me know if you guys think if it's any different from here, but uh, I think it's pretty clear cut from what we've been seeing this last week. So, anyways, that's gonna be it for me. I hope you guys enjoyed the style video. I'm not sure if I'm gonna make another one next week. If you guys like these like week reviews, let me know and I'll try to make another one, but that'll be it for me. So thank you again for watching and I'll catch you all next time.